Hi, this is Professor Lazarus again, and in this video, we will be talking about bonds. This will be the first of a number of videos on the topic of bonds, which can be pretty complicated. So I've broken it out into several separate videos to make it easier for you to be able to digest this challenging material. So what are bonds? Basically, a bond is a financial instrument that is sold by organizations, private companies, as well as by governments like the state or the city or the county or even the federal government. A bond is a way for the issuer, the seller to raise funds. Why does a company need to sell bonds as opposed to going to the bank? Well, there might be several reasons and we will not get into those discussions in this uh, particular video. Now, there are different types of bonds serial bonds, callable bonds, treasury bonds, etc. And I, again, I would suggest you refer back to your textbook or other sources for a more detailed discussion on the types of bonds. Now, why would a government uh, sell a bond like the state, city or county? You might have seen examples of this when you went to the, voting, uh, the polling booth to vote the last elections. You might have seen one or more questions asking you, the voter, to authorize the, the city or the county or the state to sell a bond for a specific designated purpose. So for instance, uh, one purpose for the county to sell a bond might be to raise funds for school construction. Another reason might be for the county or the state to build a specific stadium, like a football stadium or a baseball stadium, as Maryland State did many years ago when they built a new stadium for the Baltimore Ravens team and they built a new stadium for the Baltimore Orioles team for baseball. So there can be very specific purposes why a state or city or county would want to raise funds. But in most cases, their charters require approval, a majority approval by the voters of that jurisdiction. Now, when it, gets, when it comes to bonds, think of bonds as a piece of paper that, as I just said, that gets sold. On that piece of paper, there's a dollar value uh, attached to that. That's what we refer to as a face value. Another component of the piece of paper would be some language that talks about a term, a bond term. Let's assume five years. And I'll talk about the significance of this in, in a few minutes. Then you have an interest rate attached to that bond. That interest rate would be called, or can be called the contract rate or the stipulated rate. So when, let's assume in this case, Morgana Engineering sells a bond. The bond has a face value of $10,000 and a bond term of five years and a contract rate of 10%. What does that mean? That means Morgana Corporation will try to sell the bond and get some money in return. And when they get some money in return, they'll use that money for expanding their operations, etc. And at the end of the bond term, in this case, at the end of five years, they will have to repay that entire $10,000 all at one time. Now, in addition to repaying the face amount of $10,000, Morgana Engineering will also have to pay the investor interest at the stipulated interest rate, which is a contract rate. The frequency of the interest payments will also be specified in the bond agreement. So that could be payments being made semi-annually, annually, etc. Now, in addition to the contract rate, there's another interest rate that you have to be familiar with. That is called the market rate. Now, there are different ways to explain the market rate. One simple way to understand the market rate would be as follows. If an investor is looking to invest $10,000, he can go and buy a Morgana Engineering Company's bond for $10,000 that pays 10%, as I mentioned earlier. Or he can shop around for other investments. Let's assume he shops around to look at what other investment options are there. And if he were to then average out, take an average of all his other investment options, that average interest rate would be could be broadly classified or categorized as the market rate. The relationship between these two rates, which two rates, the market rate and the contract rate, determines whether a bond can sell at face value, which would be scenario number one, or whether the bond will sell at a discount, scenario number two, or whether the bond will sell at a premium, scenario number three. Let's look at each of these scenarios in a little bit more detail. 
Scenario number one, bonds selling at face value. For this to happen, the market rate, 10%, again, these are all hypothetical examples, the market rate of 10% must equal the contract rate of 10%. When this relationship exists, then the bond will sell at face value. What does that mean? That means Morgana Corporation received $10,000, and then at the end of the bond term, five years, we'll have to pay out the $10,000 plus interest. So that's scenario number one. How about scenario number two? In scenario number two, for the bonds to sell at a discount, the market rate now has gone up in this example to 11%, while the contract rate still stays the same at 10%. So market rate is greater than the contract rate. In this case, when this relationship exists, then Morgana Corporation will receive only $9,000, but at the end of five years, they have to pay out $10,000, $1,000 more plus interest. Now, why would Morgana Corporation do this? Well, let's switch hats and put our investor hat on. If an investor was looking to invest some money, if he were to buy a Morgana Corporation bond, then all he's gonna receive is 10%. But if he were to shop around elsewhere, he can possibly get 11%. So he therefore has no incentive at this point to buy a Morgana Corporation bond, which is paying a lower interest rate. Well, Morgana Corporation personnel know this, so they are going to offer an inducement, an incentive for the investor to buy their bonds. And the incentive is to sell the Morgana Corporation bonds at a discount. So what that means is the investor then only pays Morgana Corporation $9,000 today, but he receives $10,000, $1,000 more at the end of five years. But in return, he accepts a lower interest rate with a differential of 1% over the five years. Now let's look at scenario number three, where the bonds sell at a premium. For this to take place, the market rate now in this case is only 9%, but the contract rate for Morgana Engineering Bonds is 10%. So what does this mean? This means Morgana Corporation now receives $11,000, but only has to pay out $10,000 plus interest. But $10,000 is a face value that's paid out at the end of five years. The interest, of course, is paid out either semi-annually or annually, depending on the frequency as, stipu as stipulated in the bond agreement. But let's try to understand the logic of this from an investor standpoint. So from an investor standpoint, when he's looking to invest his money, if he bought a Morgana Corporation bond, he can get 10%, the contract rate. But if you were to shop around elsewhere, all he can expect to get is 9%, less than what Morgana Corporation will pay. Well, again, Morgana Corporation personnel know this. So they are therefore going to require the investor to pay even more than the face value. So the investor pays $11,000, but only gets back 10,000. But in return, he gets a higher interest income from Morgana Corporation over the five-year period. So this is an overview of the three different scenarios of bonds and their selling prices. Again, I've used hypothetical examples in terms of numbers here of the selling price. In a future video, I will show you mathematically how to calculate the selling price using present value tables. Now, let's look at what I have up here. How do we calculate the interest that Morgana Corporation will pay out on the bonds? The formula for that would be face value times contract rate times time. Now, the time numbers would vary depending on the time period we are looking at. If you're calculating interest for a one-year frequency, of payment, then you'll use a number one. If hypothetically you were going to use a interest frequency of two, then you would use a number two. What if hypothetically you were calculating interest only for a one month period? Then you would use one over 12, the 12 referring to the 12 months. If you were to calculate interest for two months, then you'll use two over 12, etc. What if you were calculating interest frequency and was expressed in days, like 30 days? Then for the time you would use 30 over 360, not 365, but 360, which is a, considered the banking year. If you were calculating interest for 60 days, you would use 60 over 360, etc. Okay, then let's look at another example. What if I said a $1,000 face value bond sells at 97? I expressed it in this way, and I asked you, how much does a bond sell for? What you would do is you would take the $1,000 face value and you would multiply that by 97% of the face value. 
and that would give you $970, which represents the fact that the bond is selling at a discount. Why? Because the bond is selling at less than the face value of 1,000. We move to the next example, same $1,000 face value bond. It sells at 105. Question, what does it sell for in terms of dollars? You would take the same $1,000 face value and multiply that by 105%, which gives you 1,050. This sells at a premium because it's selling at an amount greater than the face value of 1,000. So I hope this gives you a good foundation for bonds and this wraps up our first video on bonds. This is Professor Lazarus signing off. And as I always like to say, we accountants work our assets off. Thank you.